Hi everyone. Uh, sorry I've not been on for a while. Um, the fridge seems to have got in the way again. <laughs> but um, it's all good, it's all good. Uh, everything seems to be going to plan. Um, I passed my English exam so I'm well happy with that. Um, I'm actually making this video today in response to a couple of things um, that's been going on. Um, and it's taken me a while to actually figure out how to make this video and what I want to say in it because it touches on a very delicate subject. Um, so yeah, I'm sort of like, I think of course, I'm sort of um, trying to sort out the energy because it's doing my head in, <laughs> basically. Um, I mean, if you've come over from the Greenfields uh, Access, Disability Access Campsite website, uh, Facebook page, sorry, hello, <laughs> you um, might recognise me, you might not, um, from that, from the campsite. Um, I'm making this video today really because, um, you know, understanding hidden disabilities um, and also in response to a little bit of um, a smear campaign that's been set off um, which I really don't want to play into but I need to respond to it but I also want people to understand um, what's actually going on from my point of view um, because yeah you look at me you don't think I've got any disabilities whatsoever um, this is my cat Zappy. <laughs> she likes to be on camera whenever I put videos on. I start talking and she appears. Any misses? Mm. But um, yeah, back to my point. Um, for those who know me at the Creamfields Access Campsite, you'll know who I am. Um, those who have really got to know me will really, really know who I am. Um, and they'll know that I suffer with mental health issues. Um, I grew up in a, a very controlling, abusive family environment. Um, I mean, if you looked at my videos, past videos on this channel, you'll see. Um, I've gone into great detail. <laughs> well, not grisly details, but you know, I, I've gone into how it's affected me, um, the whole dynamics of it. Um, and obviously, um, as a result of this environment, um, I've developed mental health issues. Um, I was given a diagnosis of uh, emotionally unstable personality disorder back in uh, 2012. And since then, I've been trying to understand what it is, who I am, why I've got it, what causes it, what helps it, what, what triggers it, and everything, you know, the ins and outs. <laughs> and after 12 years, I think that I've actually fucking done enough research um, and know enough to be able to speak about it and know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, so anything that I do take, say in, in these videos, throughout these videos and this one, it, it's who I am, it's my experience, and it's, it's facts, because that's what I work from. I work from facts. Um, you know, I, it's only recently that I've actually realized well, it's not just me, it's, it's other people. Um, I might actually be autistic, uh, undiagnosed. Um, so I'm currently on the waiting list um, to have autistic tests and, and you know, see if I am. Um, but I have big traits of autism. Um, it never occurred to me that I might be autistic because when I was growing up and, and even when my daughter was born, it was a misconception that 
only happen to males. Um, and my only experience of um, anybody that was autistic was in the film Rain Man, you know, with um, Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman. That was the only experience I'd known about, you know, autism and what the effects are. And it's, it was nothing like me at all, you know. So I wouldn't put the conclusions together. I'm, I'm not male, but, you know. Um, but yeah, it, obviously years have gone past. And it, it's recognised that women get it as well, you know. It's, it's very common, um, autism. And it's, it's been more and more diagnosed in adulthood, um, especially in women. Um, and yeah, I have massive traits of autism. And one of them, which <laughs> I've only just found out recently, in the, in, well, the last, I suppose the last week really, um, I've been looking into it properly. And I was quite shocked when I was watching a video of a man explaining what a shutdown is. <laughs> I was like, that's me. <laughs> that's everything about me. It was like he just put his hand in my head and took out all my memories of every shutdown that I've ever had and just sat there and explained to me who I was and what was happening. I mean, I knew what was happening, but I didn't know why really. You know, I knew I'd been triggered. But I thought my behaviour was abnormal and, you know, just weird. Um, and, you know, nobody else did it. Not to the extent that I do it. Um, and everything that goes on while I'm in that shutdown. Um, I really did think it was abnormal. Uh, and nobody, even when I've explained it to therapists and doctors, they, they've never come back with anything about it. You know, so it's something that I've had to deal with and just get on with when it when it happens, you know. Um, try and avoid everything that triggers me into one of those. Um, and when you've got like complex post-traumatic stress disorder from abuse growing up, you know, from a very toxic, controlling, abusive family, and then relationships sort of like are the same, emotionally manipulative, um, it's not good. Um, it destroys your mind and you know you, you need to stay away from those sorts of things because it affects it affects my life on, on so many different levels um, now this is where this experience that I've had lately uh, through a couple of members of um, the Creamfields Accessibility uh, campsite um, I bec became friends with a couple of years, well three years ago 2022, um, well, yeah, it would have been my third time, uh, first time in the, the access camp, so I've been in the access camp three times now, so it's a third, third year basically, but my first time was 2022, um, and it was after the Creamfields event had happened, and you know, everybody was making new friends and everything like that, and kept in contact, and um, I'd met this family um, and a son called David um, which I was told that had um, learning difficulties you know he's well how old is he now he's in late 30s now um, but yeah you know we had hit it off you know like, as friendly people do you know I was my normal self and friendly and, and everything and you know we had a good time there, dancing, you know, and that was it, you know. Um, but he messaged me after. Um, we had shared some of the same interests. Um, not deep conversations or anything like that, you know, just surface level type stuff. Um, obviously when it comes to explaining mental health issues and past and shit like that, I didn't feel that well, yeah, I'd let him know that I have mental health issues and, um, you know, like I do with anybody, you know. Even somebody that doesn't really understand what they are but knows of them because he probably suffers with them himself, you know. Um, he has learning disabilities, so it's going to be hand in hand, really, you know. 
the sorts of behavioural issues and all sorts, you know, and it's it's caused by brain. <laughs> so, you know, there's going to be all sorts. Um, but yeah, we'd have conversations. Um, and I'd even given him a load of books. Well, not me personally, it was my friend. And she was getting rid of her library because obviously she's become visually impaired and can't read anymore. So it's just a waste of space. So instead of having them there as a reminder of her losing her vision, um, but also to create more space so she can fill it with more crap. <laughs> um, she got rid of her library, basically. Um, and David said that he was an avid reader. And they're both the sort of like same sort of I think it's religion, whatever you want to call it, or beliefs and paganism, you know. David's uh, a practicing pagan wit uh, paganist, um, and Heather, she's a pagan, you know. I thought that was the same sort of interest in reading and stuff, fantasy witches, dragons, and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, some good book series, you know. Um, and they're not cheap. <laughs> so she wanted them to go to somebody that would appreciate them. So it was like, yeah, come on, we'll sort this out. Do you want them, David? He was like, yeah, you know, I mean, we sorted out. Um, you know, his mum come and collected them in the car with him. Uh, it was it was literally a, a car load of books. <laughs> but yeah, you know, and that's all we've ever sort of like had. You know, it's, you know, when Queensbuild is coming up, he pops up, you know, are oh, you going to be there and that, and oh, well, how are to uh, come say hello, you know, type thing. So it's been okay. Um, so a couple of weeks before Creedfields, I think about a couple of weeks, or maybe about a week and a half, somewhere like that. Um, details don't need to be that specific, does it? But yeah, um, just before Creedfields, um, he messaged me, um, you know, obviously, how are you and are you going to be there? And, I was like, yeah, well, it actually, no, it, it started off quite strange, actually. Um, it started off, hey, babe. And he's never spoke to me like that before, so instantly, I know that it's not sort of like normal friendly sort of thing. He's, he's interested. He has an attraction. I can tell straight away. So hey babe. And in the second one, you don't mind me calling you that, do you? Um so yeah, there's an attraction and he's testing to see if it's okay. Sort of. Or at least to see if there's an interest or whatever for oh well, for whatever reason. But I don't know, maybe it's for an emotional attachment. Um, I'll explain why a bit further on. So, you know, I'm I'm sort of, I know what he wants, but I don't want to play into it. I don't want to feel, I don't want to sort of offend him because I know he's got learning difficulties, so I want to keep it surface level, you know. Um, I know I don't want a relationship. Um, and it's it's not that the fact that he's got learning disabilities or anything like that. I just don't want to be in a relationship. Um, my head still needs to sort myself out. You know, I've still got things that I need to get a grasp on in my own life. You know, I'm I'm going to college. I'm moving forward. You know, and I, I can't have somebody there that needs twenty four hour attention. You know. Um, it, it's one of those I just don't have space in my life to be able to dedicate myself to somebody like that. I really don't. Um, it's I'm not blaming him for being who he is, what he's got, how, what he was born with, how he deals with life or whatever, you know. I'm not judging him one bit for who he is as a person and his disabilities or anything like that, it, it's me, I cannot put my time and attention into the, what he needs, really, I can't give him what he needs. Um, so I know straight away that 
there's going to be no chance that I'm going to get into any sort of emotional relationship other than surface level, you know. Um, I'll be a friend, very much so, like I am with all my friends, you know, I'll, I'll go to the ends of the earth, but when it comes to a physical relationship and, a, a, you know, a romantic relationship, it, it's just not going to work. It, I'm going to go mental, he's going to go mental, it, it, it's going to clash like fuck, um, just due to my own mental illnesses, um, because with me, I have emotional personality, that, I'm so, emotionally unstable personality disorder, I'm very emotional, <laughs> basically, um, and it depends on my environment, I can be very easily emotionally manipulated um, because that's how my brain's been set up uh, through the family dynamic, you know. I was extremely manipulated um, and it was my natural instinct to be a people pleaser, to think I was a problem, uh, that I'd always done something wrong, that I was to blame for everything. Um, and it had such an impact on me. Um, in later life especially, that it brought on suicidal thoughts and actions. Um, I've lost count how many times I've tried to, you know, to, to end it all. I really have. Um, but I didn't realise what was happening to me. I didn't know the tactics of emotional manipulation. Um, so, yeah, through this conversation with David, um, he asked me out, and I was very flattered, yeah, you know, any woman is flattered when somebody approaches her that wants, you know, that finds her attractive and, you know, would like to take her out, or have a relationship with, him, with, the, with her or whatever, you know. Um, So yeah, I, I gently let him down, you know, declined his offer and told him why, you know, I'm not ready. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't say I'm not ready, I said I just can't have a relationship. Um, it's not, it's not like I'll, I'll be ready, ever ready for him because, to be honest, the dynamics between who I am and who he is and his learning difficulties. I can see myself being controlled, being manipulated by emotions. Um, I mean, I know I can hold it off for a certain amount of time, but after a while, you know, my brain switches back into submissive mode, to self-destruction mode. So I'm the cause of the problem, so I'll try and fix it, you know. I am a fixer of problems. Um, because that's how my brain's been abused enough to actually be uh, a people pleaser. At the detriment of my own health and safety. And it took me a fucking hell of a long time to recognise that. And it's only been like the last year. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, it's coming up to the last year. Um, I will actually go through the process this time last year of um, figuring people out and what they were doing to me, and you know, the penny dropping, and my brain actually going, "Dink, there we go. We no longer do that anymore. We're going to be doing something new, um, and we're not going to stand for it anymore." Um, I don't care who you are, you could be four years old, you could be a hundred years old, you can have learning difficulties, you can have a normal brain. When it comes to emotional manipulation for your own benefit, I'm not going to stand for it because it triggers me. Uh, firstly, <laughs> it puts me into a shutdown, um, what they call an autistic shutdown. Um, and all the things that come with that, which basically is I can't communicate. I find it 
extremely hard to speak to people, especially when I need to. Um, and it doesn't matter, I could be in the most danger and I can't speak, you know, I need to get out of danger, I can't speak. Um, I can't go and get help when I need to. So, yeah, um, so yeah, I've rejected De David. Um, and I've gone away. I've gone down to my friend, Heather. Um, now when I'm there, I'm not going to sit there and have conversations with other people on my phone. You know, I've gone down to see Heather and to help her and to be a friend, and which I had I gone down to, not necessarily to go and do some shit down there for her, but you know, me, I like to help. Um, so yeah, I did a lot of gardening for her. I um, moved a big planter that had been rotten away and all the soil was coming out and all the sides were dropping off and yeah, decided to clean that up for her and make space for her and you know, because obviously she, she's having problems seeing, so walking out in the garden, um, I don't want to be chuffing up and <laughs> that's the sort of person I am. Um, because she's unable to do it for herself anymore, you know, I'm trying to make life a bit easier for her. And to save us, you know, having to get somebody in and costing her a fortune and being ripped off and blah, 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 you know, I will help. So I've gone down and I'm getting messages from David. Um, now, his, the whole demeanour's changed from what I know, know about him. Um, because with me, sometimes when I shut down, well, I can't communicate, can I? So I don't talk to people. People that know me through the Access Campsite will know that I'm shit at communicating. They can send me a message and I might not answer for a few days. Um, or even longer, you know, it has been longer on, on some occasions. Um, but I will get back to them when I'm able to. And they understand that about me. Um, uh, David's been the same, you know, there's never been an urgency, he's never shown an urgency that I've, you know, for not messaging back straight away or anything like that. Um, so yeah, he started bombarding me with texts, well not texts, but messages on, on Messenger, I don't think he's got my phone number, I'm not like his. Um, so yeah, but I knew what was happening. He was trying to convince, well I didn't read all the messages um, and I was under a lot of stress anyway because Creamfields was coming up so I was getting anxious about that. My exam uh, results was on the same day, I was extremely anxious about that so I was trying to forget about everything and I was down at the head this, just trying to sort my head out and have a good time and with her and relax and chill. <laughs> I can feel myself getting all anxious again now. Um, trying to cope with not, well, with being shut down, but trying not to shut down. Trying to get out of it. So, yeah. She let me come down. <laughs> um, and chill for a bit. Just forget about everything and everyone. So, yeah, I'm getting these messages. And I haven't opened them because I know what's going on. And I don't want it to trigger me. Um, I think we'd had the conversation beforehand that yeah I'd be seeing him at Creamfields. I'm going to be there. Um, as it happens, I didn't I didn't bump into him at all. Um, although he saw me, um, but when I'm at Creamfields, I don't really pay attention to anyone. I've not got my glasses on, so I can't see anybody anywhere. Anyway, they're really fuzzy. I've got my sunglasses on even at night, so, you know, with the flashy lights and stuff like that, so I cannot see anyone. <laughs> I'm just in my own little world for a few days. Um, you know, unless you're actually coming up to me and waving me in my face, I'm not going to see you. So, yeah, um, little did I know while I was there, um, David was texting me, he'd seen me, and I'm glad I didn't actually open the messages because if I had have done, I would have freaked out. Um, firstly, because on the Thursday we'd been evacuated from 
the campsite because of hurricane winds that had actually put us in danger with the um, perimeter fences blowing down around our campsite. Um, and they're not like just like chain, not not chain, uh, metal sort of like fences like that. It's proper metal thick fences that you know would uh, decapitate you or chop you in half if they land on you. You know, it, it's heavy things. <laughs> it squash you or whatnot. Um, and we've been told to stay in our tents. You know, we're getting all these um, messages through on the app saying, you know, button down your tents, make sure that all the poles are in, you know, your tent pegs are in because it's going to get windy. Um, and to stay in your tents, basically. So, yeah, I'm in my tent and I was quite happy. Um, it's blown everywhere, like, but uh, yeah, it was battened down really well. Um, and then things started smashing around. And I thought it was actually the portal who was just at the top of the field where we was. Um, or even the burger van, <laughs> because it started getting louder. So, oh god, yeah, that could be the bur burger van going. Um, but no, it was the perimeter fences. I didn't know this. So it was going on for a while. And crashing was getting more and more. Um, people were starting to shout help. Can you help me? Can you help? You know, um, and I'm trapped in my tent. I can't see anything. I don't know what's going on. And I go into a panic mode. Proper panic. Um, like a rabbit stuck in the headlights, you know, doesn't move. Just Frightened. Um, and this is my fight, flight, or play dead response. And normally I play dead, you know, so if I need to get out in a situation like that, it's, it's difficult, you know, because I've got to get out of this mode. So I've already been triggered this weekend from that because we get evacuated. Um, I'm not going to go into some, any more details than that because it's it's difficult to explain <laughs> unless you go through it yourself. It, it's very difficult to explain to someone what's actually happening. But yeah, I just freeze. Oh, that was it. Yeah, well, we did actually get evacuated. You know, we had the marshals come around and uh, the security. We need to evacuate you. Everybody, get out your tents come with us, um, head down to the welfare, blah 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 blah, um, and I was in that much of a panic. I grabbed my bag, and I grabbed the tobacco on my phone, put the jacket on, and I was out of my tent. Now, I was in little shorts and a little camo, cami top, in my bed, uh, no shoes on. So. Yeah, I couldn't even think to put shoes on. It was like, I need to get out, you know, I've got to go. Quick, hurry, hurry, I'm in danger. You know, it, that was it, that was the response, I have to get out, quick, quick. Um, and yeah, I had bruised feet by the end of it and everything, it was horrible. But, um, yeah, I was proper triggered. So, yeah, if I'd have seen these messages that I was getting from David, even beforehand, even before I went to Greenfields, the ones that he'd actually sent, I wouldn't go to Creamfields for starters, and if I'd have seen them while I was there, I would have left. Just through my own mental health, basically. Um, I would have felt unsafe. I would have felt stalked. I would have felt in danger. Now, it could have been anybody that had done that to me, you know? It could have been the most nicest person in the fucking world that had done it to me. I still would have given the same response. Because, firstly, my boundaries were being targeted. Um, I, would, I told him no. Um, 
and when I was looking back at the, the messages after Greenfields and everything when I got home and that and actually just before I blocked him um, I could see the progression of obsessiveness and I knew it was going to happen I knew it was going to happen um, trying to convince me that he loved me um, and sending me little things uh, little sort of like videos of sayings it's, it'd be stuff that I'd say <clears throat> you know somebody was te um, if somebody was wanting to know my character you know my beliefs my core beliefs and you know how people treat me what I would do you know um, but for my own mental welfare you know it wouldn't be anything nasty it would be what you should do in the most loving spiritual way is how I'd do it you know I'd be truthful and honest and if somebody was testing my boundaries a normal person would be able to talk about it really I suppose but when it comes to David because he has learning difficulties um, how do I explain all that to him um, how do you approach what he's doing without offending him and sending him on whatever or you know is he actually doing this on purpose because he knows what he's doing and he's trying to wear me down until I go okay you know because that's what's happened to me before and all the signs of what he was doing was showing me that he's doing exactly the same as what other people have done done to me to trap me in a, an emotional bond which is actually what they call a trauma bond you know triggering my deep set traumas so he can gain an emotional t attachment to me so I would go out with him um, emotional manipulation <coughs> now whether it is just David not knowing what's going on and doesn't know or whether it's he knows exactly what he's doing I don't know you know either way um, and I'm not trying to blame him for anybody, anything I'm not trying to accuse him of, of anything you know I'm just trying to deal with my own life and my own response I'm not a person that goes out and causes shit. I'm not a person that's nasty and vindictive on purpose just to be nasty. Um, I don't lie. I can't lie because I deal with truth. Um, it has to be logical fact. So when I look at things, it is, it's black and white. Um, which is another autistic trait really apparently um, I have to look at things at face value at what they are well not face value because face value is, uh, isn't it but you know I have to look deeper into the logic of people's behaviour towards me and what it actually is what they're actually doing because I've not been aware for so long and when you start actually realising how people manipulate through emotions you know, they make you feel sorry for them which yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll give anybody the, you know, the empathetic nature that I need to give people <laughs> it's who I am, it's, I can't not give that that's who I am um, but there are people out there that will use that against me to get what they want from me. And there are signs, you know, there are certain tactics that they'll do. Put down, make you feel like you're hurting them, that they're the victim and you're the abuser. Um, you know, they'll guilt trip you. Oh, you're being horrible. Oh, you're not doing this, you're not speaking to me. What? Um, they won't give you enough time to 
thing. There's an urgent need that they make you feel that you need to get back to them, that you need to react. And I don't react anymore, I respond. Um, my body reacts straight away. It shuts down. So I know something's wrong straight away. Something doesn't feel right because I shut down. There's a fucking reason. That is my early warning system. That something's not good. Something's not right. But I can't really speak up straight away to fix it. Because first of all, I need to analyse it and figure out what shut me down. And why. And what I've got to do to fix it. Um, I mean, a normal person, normal functioning brain, I suppose they could do this quite quickly, switching between tasks, um, which I have problems with as well, you know. <laughs> um, trying to communicate what's going on when you can't communicate. It's a fucking nasty little vicious circle. And obviously in all this, there's the side effects of the autism, uh, the stimming, the not communicating, not being able to do things um, other than hyper focus on some hyper fixate, sorry, on, on certain aspects of what's going on in my home life because I can't go outside, because I can't communicate. And it's, it affects every, every aspect of my life. Um, and it's not just these people that I have a, a reaction to that I can't communicate with. I can't communicate with anybody. My best friend, my daughter, you know. Um, even online, I have problems. You'll see me drop out. It's like I have done with this channel. You'll see that I won't make videos for a long time. It's because I'm trying to cope the best I can in the only way I know when I'm under stress. Um, and yeah, on the outside I look like a normal person. But on the inside it's trying so hard not to be falling apart um, because I know what it's like when I do fall apart and it's dangerous to my life. It's a big fucking danger to my life. Um, and I won't let anybody get me back down there. And, um, so when I see the signs, that's my reaction. So, um, yeah, there's been a bit of a smear campaign on the Facebook page. Um, and the reason why I know it's a smear campaign is because Anybody that doesn't know two sides of the story, um, well, you'd think, you know, it was actually David's mum, because it's probably so confusing now. <laughs> but yeah, it was David's mum. Um, obviously, David's told her that I'd blocked him. And instead of actually coming to me and asking, why have you blocked David? Obviously, she, she knows that he's going to cause problems because of his behavioural issues or learning difficulties or whatever, whatever, whatever comes with it, you know. Um, it's part and parcel of David that would have been for all of his life. Um, she'll know that something's gone on. She won't know what. She'll have an idea that what could go on because obviously she should know her son, she should know the patterns of, of what happens. Uh, how he is, so she should already have some sort of idea of what my problem is. I mean, obviously, there's going to be people that out there that are going to be completely opposite to what my problem is, and they just won't like him. And you know, because there is that stigma against dis uh, disabled people, um, big stigma. Um, you know, and I can understand that. But either way, you know. Instead of coming to me and asking me what's the problem, you know, 
you know, can we sort it out? There's been a big smear campaign on uh, Facebook. Uh, how wonderful David is, and how could anybody block him? I mean, I've not sat there and read it all because I know what it's for. Um, it's to create drama, basically. Um, yeah, any normal person would have come and asked first. And then if it was detrimental to, you know, if it was a, a negative thing, then yeah, yeah, fair enough. Fucking blast it whatever Facebook or wherever you want to, but... to actually not come to me first and ask what the problem is and try and sort it out that way, you know, privately. Um, it's all been spread all over Facebook. Now, the only reason to do that is because you want to cause drama. You don't actually want to solve anything. You want to make out that you're the victim. Now, the reason why I say that is because I understand toxic behaviour. I've had to learn about it. I've had to study it. I've had to analyse it. I've had to work it out. Because it's emotional manipulation. And if you manipulate the situation enough to a certain kind of mental illness people, well, or autistic people, <laughs> I suppose I, I should actually start um, saying that because, yeah, I could be one of those very easily. To play the victim to an autistic person, you know, or to emotionally manipulate anybody that has a mental health issue, it gets them to shut down, it gets them to shut up. Oh, let me expose this person for being this nasty, horrible person. How, how could anybody block my son that has, the dis disabled son that has learning disabilities? How could anybody do that, you know? Let me smear your name across everywhere, make you out to be a nasty person before I even know what's going on. You know, let me play the victim first. You know, that, that's toxic manipulation on the highest level. Um, and I'm not going to play into that. So that's why I've not actually said anything about it. And it was actually because of another Facebook post from a lovely, lovely, lovely woman called Jen. Jenny Gill. She's absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah. She's absolutely beautiful. Um, she's uh, suggested that maybe people open up about their disabilities so we could all learn about the hidden disabilities because obviously this, these posts have gone on. I, I, I really haven't read where they've all stemmed out into, you know, so, but I can get the gist just off <laughs> certain posts. Um, so, yeah, something's kicked off about people pretending to have disabilities when they shouldn't even be in the campsite and shit like that, you know? So, and I know it's all sort of misdirected, but at me, you know, it, it's... Yeah, I know where it's directed. And I know why. Because of the smear campaign, you know? And I shouldn't have to prove to myself, uh, to anybody, about my disability. Um, but yeah, I don't mind opening up about it. But then I know that it can be used again as a way, well, as a weapon, basically. You know, you find out enough about somebody and how they tick. That's how you control them. That's how you can manipulate them. That's how you can make them feel guilty and responsible for stuff that has not even really happened. You know, it's, it's how you control the narrative. And um, yeah, it's, 
it's a situation I find myself in right now because David's mum did actually contact me eventually um, but it was I can't remember how long after but yeah why did you block my son oh no what was it sorry are you going to tell me why you blocked David and my response was yes in time when I'm able and the response I got was don't bother so I know straight away she doesn't want to actually solve anything she doesn't care that David's been blocked she doesn't care about the reasons why David's been blocked she's tr trying to manipulate the narrative because she knows he stepped out of line but she's trying to make me feel responsible to feel guilty uh, to feel like I'm the abuser and he's a victim that the whole family's victims and I'm not going to play into that I'm not I'll expose it but you know people make up their own minds about other people and I know this is probably going to kick off something else as well but this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to respond because I don't want to escalate what's already a fucking delicate situation you know but I could see how it was all going to play out and this is it with certain kinds of people you can't play into them because it harms you in the end because they want to play the victim they want everybody to think that they are this whatever for their own game for their own persona you know my character speaks for itself uh, anybody that knows me will know that I would not have done that without fucking good reason you know to block somebody you know I've thought fucking long and hard and it, it, it's I've wrapped my brains and twisted myself up and fucking gone through the guilt trips to fucking what have I done wrong and all that shit when I know I've done nothing wrong you know nothing wrong at all all I've done is protect myself from somebody that was trying to push my boundary and when you know that that's like narcissistic behaviour toxic behaviour manipulation and it's unhealthy and it can affect somebody's brain to the point where they want to fucking kill themselves then I'm not going to fucking play into it and I don't care who you are I really don't I'm not going to do that now whether David knows he's doing it or not I don't know um, obviously he's grown up in a different but well, I can't say different I mean and I can't really fucking judge and I can't point fingers either because I know the behaviour and if I start accusing people of being this that and the other and stuff like that even though it'll be fact um, I know I'm going to get a backlash from it a big backlash I'm going to get a backlash from it anyway it won't matter what I say you know I could, I could, I could give in but I'd still fucking be made out to be the monster, you know. Well, I'm not a monster, not at all. The monsters are the ones hiding behind the masks, playing the victim. Whether David knows he's doing it or not, I don't know. But his mum knows. His mum knows that she's doing it. She knows that she doesn't want to resolve anything. She's just taking the opportunity to play the victim. Um, and I'm sorry, but yeah that's what she does you know I don't know her personally but I know the patterns I mean I met her a couple of times not really spoken to her but mm, there's certain people I don't really like speaking to I mean with David I got I got a good energy off him but could it have been just me and the situation the circumstances you know 
Creamfields environment, very loving, very friendly, very happy, you know, and that year was the year that I found myself spiritually, really, and everything was going really, really well, and life was going great, and I connected to the universe and all that shit, you know. <laughs> but yeah, um, I never got that bad vibe off him. I mean, there was a few things that, you know, a lot of red flags that flipped up. But yeah, nothing threatening. Nothing that would make me feel uneasy until this year. Until he asked me out and I said no. Then it all changed. Um, the vibe I got was obsessive. The vibe I got was I'm going to break through your boundaries, you know. I'm going to carry on until you say stop. I mean, you even said that to me, you know, if I get too much, tell me. But for an autistic person that shuts down, that can't communicate, how can you communicate to somebody, even just with a normal brain, that has a normal brain, what they've done? You can't. So how do you communicate it to somebody that has learning difficulties? You know, and how do you communicate it to their parents that doesn't want to resolve the issue, that wants to escalate the issue to as far as you can, you know? That's my predicament. So this is why I made this video. So, I mean, those that know and that understand mental illness will know exactly what I'm going on about. Those that have been through abusive upbringings and relationships will know exactly what I'm going on about. The emotional manipulation and control. Um, you know, there's too much of it about. And when you've got people that are making it more difficult, hiding behind disabilities, that's when it becomes really bad. <laughs> You know, um, and I can't, it takes me a while to put all this shit together in my brain and to figure it all out and to say it all as it should be said, you know. I'm not a nasty person. I don't go out to be vindictive or to cause harm. It's not who I am. I can, you know, I'm quite capable of doing shit like that. But... I choose not to be. I choose not to do that. I choose to work with the universe and the energies of the universe. Um, I know I've got the universe's backing too because ever since that I started um, exposing toxic people and their toxic influences, making this YouTube video helping other people get out of the same situations and to heal themselves. The universe has opened up to me and is making my life amazing. But I'm making the steps to do that. And if it means that I've got to stand up to a disabled person, I have to do it. I'm disabled myself, you know? Um, but for David, whether he knows or not, he needs to learn. <laughs> I know he's got learning difficulties, but he needs to learn that he can't do this to people. Especially when it comes to people in the same boat as him. Even though he can't see the disability, he has to treat people with respect. And respect their boundaries. So if somebody says no, they mean no, and not to badger and carry on and try and guilt trip and use manipulation to get what he wants. And some people need to learn that they can't use their disability or their child's disability to play the victim. So 
Carolyn, yeah. Hi, I'm Carolyn. <laughs> you might recognise me from Greenfield with the fluffy boots and the fairy wings. <laughs> and dance it like a twat. <laughs> Looking like I'm half dead because I've danced so much. But yes, I also have back problems. But yeah, contrary to belief and contrary to what you see, I really do have back problems too. Um, this is why I need a flat surface to dance on. This is why I'm on the platform stages and I have access to the toilets because since the radiotherapy for my cancer, I cannot hold my stool anymore. And these are the grisly details of my mental uh, of my illnesses and my disabilities. Um, and compared to some, it's quite like you know, much respect goes to the people that have to use well, that wheelchair users that have got to use the toilets. Um, much respect, definitely, definitely much respect, but to all you disability, disabled people in the campsite, much respect to all of you, even to David and his mum, you know, I have respect for everyone, um, I don't want to cause animosity, I want to fix problems, but yeah, there's enough to deal with, with being disabled, without adding to it, you know, and especially when you've got mental health issues. If you're a trigger, then I'm going to be, well, I'm going to react, aren't I? It's a subconscious reaction. But when it comes to actually dealing with the situation properly, I'm going to think about it first before I respond. Um, I'm not going to play into manipulation tactics. I'm not going to play into the narrative that you've made up and want everybody to believe. Um, and then there will be a time where I'll be able to talk about it, like now. Um, and I can't sit there and type it all out because it's just too fucking much. I mean, look, it's never been an hour now. Uh, that only felt like 10 minutes, actually, more than that. But, um, yeah, I think I've waffled on enough now. So, for those in the access that want to know about hidden disabilities, this is mine. But yeah, I've worn away part of my spine as well, so this is why I need the access to the, the disability stages and the flat surface to dance on. Um, because if not, it really fucking aggravates it. Like, it was aggravated this year, very much so. Um, through the not wearing shoes, through the evacuation, and also fucking not having access to the flat. The dancing part. Um, walking backwards and forwards too much as well, and having to deal with problems, security and shit like that. Um, yeah, really took it out of me this year. And it's actually got me thinking if I'll be able to make it next year. Um, it was just way too much this year for me. Just everything all incorporated into one. Um, might even try and sort something out where I'm actually not camping next year and just go in the day. <laughs> I mean, I don't live that far away, and my mate has a down in Uncle and says that I can go and stay with her, you know, and just go every day and come back every night, you know, which sounds like a fucking good idea, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've been in this video, I hope I don't offend anybody. I know I will, certain people will. But I know that the majority of you will actually understand what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, just don't play into the bullshit. Um, look at it as it is. You know, because people would know David and his mum more than I do, you know. A hell of a lot more than I do. So you'll, you'll see, or start paying attention at least, uh, how these people make you feel. They make you feel insecure, they make you feel guilty, they make you feel like you're the abuser and they're the victim. If they make you feel angry, if they make you feel sad, if they make you feel that you're not enough. To make you feel just 
like shit in general. They talk to you like shit, treat you like shit. Yes, they're constantly expecting you to give, 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 give. And they constantly take, 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 take. Emotionally, financially, even time, you know. Yeah, they're not very good people. And you really shouldn't take what they say as 100% truth. Um, because you'll be surprised at what people use to lie. I spent a lifetime proving the lies <laughs> of other people. And it's funny just how much I'm actually right on the situations, you know, exposing toxic behaviour. But I mean, if you do the research, you'll find it yourself. You, you can look all this up that I told you, you know, about toxic manipulation, trauma bonding, that's the biggest. Let me find out what your traumas are and let me s stick to you because of your traumas, you know. Just like everybody did. Was an abuser to you, you know. I know that you can be abused. I know you can be manipulated. I've just got to find a way to get in. And I won't give you time to think. And if you don't do what I say, I'm just going to expose you as a nasty person. Because I can get my way. That's all it is. But yeah, I've all forgotten enough now. Thank you everybody for watching the video. Um, sorry, it's a bit of a serious one, this one, but yeah, it's been in my head in for quite a while. And I need to get out of this shutdown because it keeps repeating. Um, and I need to get on with my life. Uh, starting college next week, so I need to get things back. I need to get myself back into that state of mind and in, instead of uh, analysing I'm fucked up, what's going on mind. I need to speak. I need to, to speak my truth. You know, I've been wronged. I need to stand up for myself. Mood. <laughs> Shut down, shit, whatever. But yeah, I can be autistic too. But we shall soon find out about that. Um, as and when it happens, because apparently the list for people uh, or the waiting list, sorry, is very, very long. Um, you can actually tell me how long it is, but you know, I can expect it's a long, long, long list. Because uh, I remember getting, just trying to get into the mental health services. I had to wait months, months and months. You know, for somebody that needed help straight away, it's, it's difficult, but I have got patience, you know. I set out 12 years ago to find out why my head was fucked and why I do things the way I do. You know, why I shut down and can't do things one day, but I can another day, you know. But that's what you got to do. You've got to analyse yourself and analyse the people around you to figure out what the fuck's going on. Because there's that many people that hide who they really are behind circumstances, different circumstances. And try to use people for their own advantage and use situations for their own advantage. And it's, yeah, you just need to work that shit out. And especially when it comes into the disabled community, you know. Because a lot of us have gone through a lot of abuse. And we know we have. Um, unnecessary whether it be at home, whether it be through disability channels, you know, hospitals, fucking therapists, fucking carers, family, whatever, friends. We've all had that fucking stigma, you know. Somebody finds out you're disabled, especially mental illness, you know, mm -hmm. I'm crazy, I'm fucked up, you know. fucked in the head, fuck off, you know. But yeah, they do use it against you. They use it as a weapon control to make you feel less than I know exactly who I am 
and I'm not going to let anybody tell me who I am anymore. You know, I've had that for my life. People have told me who I am, and it's always been the complete opposite of who the fuck I am. So if anybody out there speaks nastily of me, I know the true people that know me will know exactly what I'm going on about. And they'll know me for who I am. So they won't believe the lies. But for those that don't know you, that's where it's difficult. And especially if you're already trauma bonded to these people, you know you get a backlash if you don't side with them. You know that there's going to be a lot of grief. Even if it's just them just fucking venting and going on and on and on and on and on. You know, and it sets off your brain. And yeah, no, it's not good. Not good. Um, best way for me to deal with somebody like that is to block and walk away. Because there's no fixing it. It doesn't matter what you say, what you do, how accommodating you are to these people. It's never fixed. They don't want it fixed. Because they're manipulating the situation to get what they want. That's all it is. It'll never be fixed. I'll never, never change because they get what they want. There's always somebody there that they can go to and manipulate to get what they want. Somebody there that they can spew all their shit out to that will listen. And go, oh, that's so bad. How bad is that? Oh, you are the victim. Oh, they should do this. Oh, they're so nasty. You know, yeah, no, I'm not going to go on for it anymore. That's it. That's it. Me done. But thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up. <sighs> yeah, I can start actually getting back to normal now I've spoken about it. So, yeah. I hope this helps, everyone. I'm sending you lots of love and light. And to my Creamfields community, I can keep raving. Bye.